What a freaking beast, fellas. Hey, get up! It's time to film Rockus. God damn you. Come on, we're surrounded. What freaking ruckus? Everyone already has ruckus on their TikToks and telegrams. Come on, don't lose your spirit. Give me your paw. Fine. In the modern 21st century, you can encounter a lot of diverse technology on the battlefield. But perhaps the tank remains the most unusual, the most powerful and the scariest machine according to the soldiers. And all these in-laws, all these javelins and other Swedes are created precisely against these tanks to destroy them. So what do we have today? Not just a stick, right? Today we have a tandem warhead. PG-7VR. Now this is a beast I understand. Let's go! I bought myself a poncho here in case of rain, and the rain started as usual. But tanks are not afraid of dirt, so to speak, and rain too, so they drive around here with all their might. And I have to peel off the electrical tape and look at this thing, which is called a starting engine and a starting charge. Well, actually, a reactive charge. In the 80s of the last century, they began to actively develop and implement reactive armor. Cumulative ammunition became more and more powerful. The thickness of the armor could not always cope with this crap. Dynamic protection, as it is called here, is... Something's wrong with my hand. Such as steel container inside, which are plates with explosives, which is mounted on top of the main armor of the tank. When the cumulative projectile hits, the explosives in the ERA... Explosive reactive armor elements? Yeah, disperse the cumulative jet and reduce armor penetration. Serious stuff. By the way, it was first used on Merkava and M6A1 tanks, if I'm not mistaken and it dramatically reduced the effectiveness of cumulative grenade launches in 1982 in Lebanon. But there's an answer to everything, in our case even a resume. The first of its kind, tandem warhead for hand grenade launcher developed in the late 80s. NPO Basalt, leading designer Kulakovsky. Let's check in principle. We've never really seen how ERA works, only in one experiment where we shot from AT4. It caught fire and so on, it was unclear. ERA is the element of dynamic protection of the tank. In our case, contact one, right? Most likely. Yeah, most likely contact one here. In short, let's see how this thing works in general. This is from a working tank, if you understand what I mean. Now we will first blast a regular RPG and understand how it reflects at all. Does it even reflect? Well... The rain has stopped. What's the point of comparing Soviet with Soviet? Let's compare Soviet with Swedish. A good composition, I think, yeah? This is the most common AT4. Well, how common? In general, Swedish, quite comfortable grenade launcher. By the way, you can watch its review on Boosty. We released it and there is, by the way, a more advanced version of this very ordinary AT4. The confined space version. That is behind this countermass jet, which will be 30 meters here, and there it simply will not be, because behind it is a liquid that completely disperses this jet. It just evaporates. It sounds beautiful in slow motion, so you can watch it on Boosty. And now I'll hit the cumulative jet, because here in the AT4 there is also a cumulative jet that penetrates 450 millimeters like our PG7L, that is the beam. So let's blast from this first. Handle, aiming device. The first, the second, next, we pull out the pin located at the back of the grenade launcher, we cock the trigger mechanism like this, we press the fuse and launch. And actually, let's blast it. Let's go.
let's see. So, what do we have here? Look, secondary fragments hit the second block. This second block sounds like an energy block. But look, this ERA, it basically fell out of there, and look how it looks. And you know what? I don't think it worked this time. And the AT-4 grenade launcher stuck its cumulative jet all the way. The Swedish grenade launcher has a lower aiming bar at 100 meters, and I was afraid that, God forbid, the projectile would not fly higher or break this rope on which all of this ERA is held. Because I only have one rope and I only had one AT-4. By the way, its recoil is almost three times more than the previous AT, which we filmed for Boosty. And apparently, I hit where I was aiming. I thought it was necessary to lower it lower to hit 50 meters. Lowered it a little lower and hit just under the block itself. And I don't think this experiment should be considered ideal because the scientific balance is not observed. Look here. It pierced her wall a little bit to the middle somewhere and slightly hooked this ERA from which the dynamic protection block contact one itself pulled out. All other blocks did not work at all. Either it was necessary to hit the ERA itself or bring another AT4. Of course, I have it, but not this time. Let's check the penetration depth, so to speak. Here, that's it. For real? We don't have such a size. How would Ivleva lack this size, huh? If you know what I mean. Well, tandem time. In theory, the tandem should break through, and we'll see, maybe this time I'll hit better, because you understand yourself, it would be a pity to screw up the AT4 had I hit it a little higher. But for tandems, I have a couple of them. Pre-charged cumulative and cumulative. Here is 64 millimeters and here is 105 millimeters. We load and in theory it penetrates 650 millimeters behind dynamic protection. I don't know what the recall is here, but I'm already scared. What a freaking beast, fellas! Fuck, a fragment hit me, imagine. I'm alive. Shit, something seems to had struck me, imagine. Damn it, imagine. Imagine. My hoodie saved me from the injury. That's rough. Can you imagine? Oh my god, look what happened. Damn it, it didn't explode. Does this mean that this thing doesn't work at all? Because the dynamic anti-cumulative protection completely coped with the task. Look, a small dent, but the cumulative blocks, these anti-cumulative ones, are broken into pieces. Look here. What happened? That's right. But the armor would definitely not have been pierced. The wall was slightly damaged. One box is in ruins here, and one block has been poured out since last time. And what's next? Look, this thing pierced at a distance, and moreover, a fragment flew into me. Pierced it across, damn it. Of course, I wouldn't forgive it for that. Ah, what can I say? One small conclusion suggests itself either this thing will work now, or I quit. Okay, just kidding. Where can I quit? Sue me, and then maybe I'll do it. So what about the fact that the anti-cumulative protection of tanks 
is capable of killing the shooter. In my opinion, this is a completely real task. If you get close to a tank, I do not recommend shooting from a tandem with the resume, or rather, the resume is so-so. Overall, I definitely did not kill the tank with one shot. And the ERA, with the help of its plates, did very well. PG-7VR also weighs 4.5 kilograms, like TBG, a thermobaric ammunition for RPG-7. It is capable of penetrating a brickwork of 2 meters or a layer of reinforced concrete of 1.5. The wall of pillbox is 2.7 meters. The maximum firing range is 150 meters. The maximum flight speed is 200 meters per second. Since the shot, due to its huge weight, had a different ballistics, it was necessary to refine the sighting complex. The new optical sight PGO-7V3 but unfortunately, I don't have it today. So, the old-fashioned way through mechanics. I won't be putting on headphones because they're somehow not very good in the helmet. The helmet will be too big. By the way, I can't hear shit. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, what a dumbass. Look, after the shot, something happened. Something really got stuck there. In the pipe. Damn. A piece of this shit got stuck here. Yeah. Don't forget to clean the weapon before use. The first time we hit the contact, and contact 1 dynamic protection worked, it threw this thing away. I thought, yoohoo, it is good that contact works, but it's bad that the resume doesn't work. This time I hit lower and pierced only, well, how much, maybe 10 centimeters, 12 centimeters of concrete? This definitely won't pierce the tank. And you know what I'll tell you? Look here. The head of the resume or the head if you want, remained in exactly the same condition. Write in the comments, maybe I'm doing something wrong and you may have more experience. Maybe something is wrong with the powders or I took the wrong powders. The powders are actually 7PR, the most suitable ones. Either something is wrong with this experiment or something is wrong with the design of the ammunition itself. Perhaps it does not have time to accelerate or the jet engine does not have time to really open normally, or there isn't enough reaction, or there is some firing distance from which, so to speak, you need to start from. But we did not find any information about this. I will still move 5 to 10 meters further out and blast it again. In principle, even if we don't hit, it should still penetrate 650 millimeters of armor, or 650 millimeters of this Concrete, I don't know, after all. Loading the last ammunition for today. Let's try to hit. If I don't hit, please don't be angry with me. I only have three of these and I can't figure out what's wrong with this ammunition. The dynamic protection worked perfectly, it pushed the first cumulative charge away and the charge generally did not work. As you can see, it is lying next to me. We see the explosive that is inside and we even see a funnel. Here it is, the very cumulative copper funnel. Look, the division is completely turned off and this one, look how it opened. It just opened. It's very cool. Now it worked as it should and that's good. If you have a tank, 
then believe me, before you go into combat, be sure to check that it is there. I mean, contact one or relict or something like that. Overall, this is important because a tank without dynamic protection can probably be hit, even with a conventional RPG, if you shoot a lot at it, for example, with a beam. Well, there remains an unclosed gestalt. Oh, by the way, anybody got a lighter? Oops, I think I missed a little. In short, look what I'm thinking. I decided to set it on fire. In short, it will be like this. I'll set it on fire now and see what happens to it. The fragments almost smashed my iPhone, which was standing right here, which captured some interesting information. And the information is that Volodinka, who is actually the operator, I tell him not to come near, it might explode at the very end. And he was like, I'll come and turn off the slow-mo camera now. And he turned it off, and it exploded like a son of a bitch. It almost smashed the iPhone, and the fragment landed right there behind him. We'll see it now. Look, it even melted the freaking asphalt here. Let's see. By the way, I don't know where this came from, but this, a piece of hot, red hot metal, flew past the behind, or if you like, the ass of our operator. So it's time to draw conclusions. According to the technical characteristics, the 7VR tandem ammunition resume should first piece dynamic protection and then 650mm of armor. In general, only the first 64mm caliber charge pre-launch or whatever it's called, pre-charged, worked for us. And the second one didn't work at all, and that's bad. It's not that I want to criticize Soviet weapons, I don't usually do that, but if we did everything right, then please tell us what's wrong with this ammunition, because it didn't work. It's heavy caliber ruckus with you, and don't switch, it will be more interesting further. I hope.